Hi guys, it's Sandy and I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube and I bring you another In the Human Rainbow series using a stamp called Flaunt It by Art Impressions. And it's a really fun one because it's got a couple of girls in it and you can do them in lots of different ethnicities. And on my blog today there's a PDF with more information on different kinds of color combinations and coloring each one of these as different ethnicities. So you can switch it up based on you and your friends and what you want to color them looking like because we don't all look the same. We are not all Caucasians. And I've tried in the past to do some posts and share some PDFs with different kinds of colorways that you can use to color skin tones and make them look like different ethnicities. That's what I call the human rainbow. And if you do things like this and you try to use other ethnicities of skin, then do me a favor and hashtag that with the human rainbow out there on the web so we can all start finding more combinations and list your colors that you picked so that we can all learn from each other. Especially on Instagram, that's where I do things the most and I spend the most time there. So I'm most likely to see your creations if you do that. So I am using the first combination here on this entire image that is on the PDF that's on my blog. So you can go download that and print it out or just keep it on your computer with the list of colors that's in it and try some different things. I like to use blues and purples in skin tone shadows because they make them a little more realistic than just using all browns, which is what I used to do for a really long time. And once I realized what blues and purples can do for you, I just was kind of excited by that. And I've tried all different kinds of ones. You know, this, this particular combination right here, I wasn't sure how this BB was going to do. And I was pretty happy with it when it was all said and done because it worked fairly well. And E53 and E11 for Caucasians are usually a really good type of midtone. And when you color right over the blue or the purple with that midtone, it tones them right back down into being a skin type of color. Now she's looking a little on the sallow side that will change a little bit as the paper dries and as the, the whole thing kind of comes together. A lot of the skin tones will look different based on what colors are around them. So she may look a little on the greenish side, but if you get something that ends up looking too greenish, then just put something a little more pinkish over top of it. So if your shadows don't end up being what you want them to be, you can change that up a little bit too. Now with this gal, I was doing some African-American skin and I accidentally picked up my midtone to color my shadows first, which doesn't end up being a problem. It's okay, because I realized part way through that I really did want to use some darker color for her shadows. So I switched it out for my dark and started adding that right in some of the very darkest areas. And what this allowed me to do was to limit the amount of the really dark. If I had gone in with the dark first and done as much with the dark as I had there with the medium, then she would have ended up being really, really dark. So this was actually a good failure to swap my markers around and do them in the wrong order. And then I just took my light color and went over it. And I'm leaving some areas with just one coat of that E13 and not with two coats because it gives me another shade of brown that way. So then I switched over and I'm going to start now working on hair and outfits. And what I decided to do was use some same colors in outfits that I'm using in some of the hair. It's going to limit the color palette on the entire card, which tends to help in unifying the whole card. So it just starts to pull together a little bit better. And I'm using a BV01 for my shading on a yellow. Yes, I know that might seem kind of weird to you. But with yellows, there's not really good colors for doing deeper shadows. This is the Y17 I'm going to use for the mid-tone. But the opposite, the complement to yellow, is purple. So if you use some sort of a purple to do shading on those kinds of things, it's going to work a lot better. So you notice that all that yellow doesn't look like brown. It looks like shaded yellow, which is pretty cool. Her dress, I wanted to have a black dress in here to share with you because with things like black or with red, if you start with a really pale color, when you're coloring something that's black or red, you're gonna end up with really pale highlights. And I tend to start my objects that are going to be black or going to be red with 
a, a decent color of that, a decent mid-tone. And a C6 is pretty hefty. You can start lighter if you feel more comfortable with that, that's fine. But then when you start adding darks along with it, then you start getting the feeling that this object is actually a black object. So here I'm going with, with a C9, you could even do a C10 or a black to do the very darkest shadows. Just scribbling them in there and that's this is kind of my normal routine. I do my lightest color first and then I go in with my shadows and add all of those and then I'll blend the darks into the mediums with the medium tone. So then I'm only worrying about one edge at a time and trying to smooth out one edge. So I'm just trying to soften the dark edge. And then I go back in with my light tone again. Just go right over the top of everything and it smooths things out. Now her dress, I'm gonna wait and see what happens with it, whether I wanna go back in and work on it more because sometimes when things dry, they'll dry a little differently. So I moved on to coloring the red dress. And again, you can see I'm coloring with a beefy red. I didn't go with a pink to make her dress really red red because I wanted it to appear as an actual red, not not with like weird pink highlights. So if you struggle with your reds not working, that could be why. If you give yourself the permission to jump in there with a real color, then that can sometimes help. Now I'm gonna go in with my dark color. This is my R89, one of my favorites. If R89 is too dark for you, if it scares you, then by all means do an R39, an R59. You can certainly do lighter shades, but the more contrast you have, the more your image is gonna pop. And I'm just gonna add all of my dark shadows and then start to blend them out with my medium. And R37 is a medium red that works really well with pretty much all of the other reds in combination. So I'm smoothing out where those dark edges were and I'm really only gonna leave that one highlight on the edge of her dress and then I went in with my R17 again so that the edge of her dress looks like it's flipping up and forward. Her hair, I'm gonna use the same colors that I used for the African-American gal's skin. So I can kind of tie those colors again together across the image because if I started putting way too many colors in here, the image is gonna start falling apart. It's gonna have way too much color. I'm using my grays to shadow her hair a little bit, and I put less shadowing, just a tiny, tiny bit, in where the glasses are. When you look at anything through glasses, it's gonna be lighter behind the glasses when you're doing a drawing like this or a piece of art. When you're looking at it in reality, you may not always see that, but um, on, a, on a stamped image like this, it will make it look like you're seeing through it if the colors underneath are not as shadowed. And before we get much further, look at the skin tone on the middle lady. Doesn't she look a little more normal now? She may have looked a little greenish before, but in comparison to her other colors, she's looking pretty good. But she definitely looks different than the lady to her left. So I wanna make sure that I make them all look like they are different people because everybody is different. If you sit around with your girlfriends at dinner and work on looking at them, like really, really, really looking at them, you'll find that everybody looks completely different, skin tone wise. So I'm adding a bunch of accents to this. Uh, glossy accents for one, because glossy accents is my latest obsession. It's not even a new thing, and I just have been really putting glossy accents everywhere on everything. And then I went in with some stickles and added just a tidge of stickles to all of the jewelry so the girls could be all swanky and full of sparkle. I even put some on the hat. And you'll notice I didn't even add any shading to the hat. I left that simple because once you start adding a lot of other details, it doesn't really matter if there's certain items that don't have a lot of detail in them. My white pen is also my friend. And since my shading wasn't perfect on the dress, I just went over it with white dots. And now you can see a little bit of the shading, but you see lots of those polka dots. Same with that dress. I added stripes to it and added little black stars to the red dress. You can disguise your coloring. If your coloring didn't come out exactly as you wanted, by all means, decorate it up and make it really fun. So this is an easel card that I ended up making and flat, it all flattens down to a four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then it stands up like this. So on my blog, there's gonna be a little PDF to show you 
the way that you fold the paper so that it actually works out that way. But look at all of the cool, glossy, and sparkly accents on this card. I think it works perfect for the name of the stamp set, which is Flaunt It. And uh, yeah, so there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Here's a couple other videos showing some other skin tone options that you might be interested in checking out because the human rainbow is something I love to see a lot more people try to color just different kinds of people, different kinds of skin, and enjoy the rainbow that God made us all to be. Feel free to subscribe if you have not yet. Uh, links for all the products are in the description, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.